We've introduced two types of control in, uh, for a feedback control system, proportional and proportional derivative control. The next topic is the effect of integral control and what it's for for improving performance. We've already said before that we often like for the system to have a DC gain of 1 with respect to the reference, meaning that whatever value that we set for the reference, the output is eventually going to approach that. An example is the cruise control for a car where this would be the desired speed and the output would be the actual speed and the feedback control is being used to try to get those two things to match. It's also co quite common in systems that there can be disturbances acting from the outside and an example is the uh, incline of a hill uh, which in the case of a car is going to cause the speed to decrease and we typically want the d effect of that disturbance if it's a steady hill to uh, have a DC gain that's very small or close to zero. That's called disturbance rejection where the reference has a DC gain of one but the disturbance has a DC gain close to zero. We already know how to analyze block diagrams so let's apply those techniques to seeing what happens with uh, due to this disturbance D. We already have an error defined so we know that E is equal to R minus Y and similarly, we know that y is equal to p times the output of this summing junction, which is d plus u. And then u, in turn, we also know is just going to be equal to c times the error signal. So let's combine all of these together. c times the error signal, c times r minus y. And then we have to plug u into this equation. So we get p times d plus p times cr minus cy. Let's combine all of the y terms together. We get 1 plus cp times y is equal to p times d plus cp times r. Solving for y, we get p divided by 1 plus cp times d plus cp divided by 1 plus cp times r. And this term we've already seen before. This is the closed loop transfer function from r to y. And uh, for this system, uh, let's say that we're applying a uh, proportional feedback control, then right away we know that the closed loop transfer function is going to be equal to kp divided by s plus kp plus 1. We've already done that before. And then let's find out what the uh, effect of the disturbance uh, input is. The disturbance is going to give us 1 over s plus kp plus 1. So the DC gain for um, a reference input is going to be equal to kp over kp plus 1 and as long as kp is a large number notice that the DC gain is going to be close to 1. As far as our, uh, our disturbance goes we can also find the DC gain from the disturbance and that's going to be plugging in s equals 0 1 over kp plus 1. So we can see that if we have a steady disturbance, meaning uh, a unit step, that the tendency of our control system is going to reduce that as long as kp is a large number. The drawback, of course, is that if you have a steady disturbance, even though this number can be small, it's not zero. So then the question is, what if you really want to be able to reject a steady disturbance and try to get y as close to uh, being unaffected as possible? The solution is to add what we call integral control. That's this term here where we have a constant ki and 1 over s acts like an integrator. And what it does is if you have a steady error, the integrator is going to build up and produce a larger and a larger signal, uh, which is a command that's going to act on our system to resist the effect of that disturbance. Let's look at that mathematically. So we're applying a controller, kp plus ki over s. And actually, I'm going to rewrite that as kps plus ki over s, because when we multiply c times p, it's a little bit easier to work with in that form, because then we get this quantity right here, kps plus ki over s times s plus 1. So let's see what that does for our transfer functions. I'm going to work this out pretty quickly just by multiplying top and bottom by s times s plus 1. So I'll just show you the answer. That's just going to be kps plus ki divided by s squared plus s plus kp s plus ki. In other words, I'm going to collect the uh, terms on the bottom 
and show that we have s squared plus kp plus 1 times s plus ki. And then notice that the DC gain for this system uh, is just going to be equal to 1. So uh, the effect of this integral control is it didn't affect the DC gain at all as far as the reference is concerned. But now let's see what happens for uh, the disturbance. So here uh, I'm going to have 1 over s plus 1 divided by 1 plus K, uh, c times p, which I'm just going to rewrite over here. I'm going to multiply both top and bottom by s times s plus 1. So on the top we're going to have s, and on the bottom we'll have the same denominator that we already found here. And the thing to note is that if you evaluate the DC gain, that DC gain is going to be 0 because of the s in the numerator. In other words, we didn't affect the DC gain for the effect of a reference, but as far as a steady disturbance goes, we actually are able to cause that to have no effect on the output of our system. Integral control can also be combined with other methods of control such as the derivative control we've already used. If you have a control that has proportional, integral, and derivative control, this is called PID control. And this general form of control is the most standard type that's used in industry. One should be careful about using the KI term, however, because a large KI term can introduce oscillations and even make the system unstable. Let's review what we've talked about so far. The problem is of disturbance rejection, where a steady state disturbance can cause a steady state error in our system. The transfer function from the disturbance to the output or to the error is a way to describe how well disturbance rejection is handled. Integral control is a way to uh, produce a control which is going to act against a steady state error, and the integral actually pushes harder and harder against the error to drive it towards zero. One caveat, though, is that large uh, gains for integral control can actually introduce oscillations and instability in the system. Overall, PID control, proportional integral derivative, is very widely used in feedback control systems.